Hi, I'm Wayne from TC Electronics and Marine. That would be www.sterndrive.info. And what we're attempting to do is show you what's involved in taking apart a um, large hub, which would be a four and a quarter inch um, OMC Cobra outdrive. There, the small hub one would be three and three quarters. So, um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take this water passage, these four bolts off the water passage, in a minute, and we're going to pry this off. But prior to that, before we start taking it all apart, we we need to know some information um, before we do that. So. What, what would be normal is, um, I have it on a fixture here, and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see this or not, uh, too good. But what we're trying to do what I'm trying to do is get a view of this that uh, is legible. Um, I think you can see that. What we've done is um, we've made a little fixture here put a dial indicator that you can purchase on the web for like twenty dollars or so and what you do is you just um, has a, an adjustment on the end here you just put some pressure on it the way you check to see if you have it set up right is you would pull it forward and it would move pull it backward and that would be the play in the bearing and that, that's normal there has to be some play in the bearing one way or the other otherwise the shaft wouldn't fit through to begin with um, so what you would do is you would just well what we want to do is we want to turn the shaft and find out if it's bent. So I'm just you can just watch the needle and it really isn't moving much. It's it's moving very little at all. And the fluctuation you see there is probably me pulling it against the bearing so this shaft is very straight um, you could it could be out around um, up to about four thou after that it's going to cause problems it's, it's going to vibrate too much it's going to wear out the seals and it will it will have problems with the clutch dog um, as well it'll make it chatter so the more warped it is the, the faster it wears the seals out my experience has been if it's six or eight thou, you get maybe 20 hours um, before the seals wear out all over again after you replace them. So you're going to keep the bolt for a while. If it's more than four thou, you should probably be changing the prop shaft. That's about it for this. We'll be, we, uh, I'm going to show you the tools. Hey, these are the tools um, that I may have to use and may not have to use. It, it just depends. Uh, this is an impact gun. Uh, the seat clamp was used just to hold the uh, dowel indicator here. Um, this this unit here, probably most of you might not have seen one of those before. It holds the nut down inside when I take the pinion nut off from the dry shaft slides down inside the dry shaft this is a pressure test kit it comes from uh, it's a snap-on 
It's uh, for a car, car radiator. And um, we've made this little fixture here. And um, it, um, I'll just show you. This is the easiest way. It basically fits over top of um, of the O-rings here. And we push it down and then we lock it with a screw on the side. And that allows us to put pressure in the unit. Uh, another way of doing it would probably be to put a cork or something that fits in here tight and um, and run some air into one of the screws that's on the side um, well it's up like this I'm I'm going to uh, go ahead and take try to take the um, water passage plate off first but you're asking if you're thinking you know why are we pressure testing it or what I need that I need that because quite often on really bad units that have been in the water for a long time you need to pressure pressurize it on the inside to give you say 30 to 60 pounds in order to get the bearing carrier out without breaking it. Okay so normally I slide this in here put my first screwdriver in there take a hammer and see if I can just pop it up just slightly. At that stage I put a smaller one in on this side. And just see if we can get that to come up a little bit. And yes, you do need three screwdrivers for this or more. So I'm going to go a little bit more here. I'm going to hit this one only enough to be able to put my if we can see it yeah there's I'm gonna put a third screwdriver in the back here so I got three screwdrivers and it's been soaking with seafoam for about an hour uh, and this is a little on the corroded side but we'll see what happens here um, if this method doesn't work of prying it off, you can get a torch, heat this up and, and melt the stud area and then just piecemeal it out. Just, just take it out in pieces. There's not much else you can do. Um, it's, and this is when you, you take it to a marina and the, a lot of times the marina doesn't have any more idea than you do of how long it's going to take them to get this apart sometimes. It can you can spend an hour taking this one piece or it can come out in two minutes it, it's there's no way of knowing I mean you can look at it and it can look all full of calcium like this one does but it this one it's coming up reasonably easy so um, my guess is that this isn't going to take be that hard uh, not as hard as it looked anyway but then the last job I I was doing here I said the same thing and it turned into a nightmare so you never know we're gonna go ahead and just try it On top of that, my wife took one of my tools. Well, I gotta blame it on her. I can't take credit for it. That'd be terrible. And I can't find a small crowbar that I usually use. But I don't think I'm gonna need it in this case. Okay, so the seam foam works pretty good. I have no idea, but it eats through the corrosion. Okay, so it is corroded pretty good. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the sides there. It's, it's eaten in, but but it actually came out not not that bad. And we probably reuse this. It's kind of borderline. It's, we're going to sandblast it and see what it looks like, and then we may or may not uh, use it. Something I might mention here is this gasket here. Um, is very important. It's important when you install a gasket that you put three or four coats of material on this when you put this gasket down. Um, because 
if this gasket doesn't seal out and the exhaust gets in there it stops the water uh, it mixes the exhaust in with the water and when it's siphoning the water up you end up getting exhaust gas from the inside of this going into the water pump area into the pickup here so some of you who have there's been a couple of people who have tried everything changed the pump checked the back pressure on the um, manifolds and they couldn't figure out where their problem was they looked at the pickup tube they thought maybe the pickup tube coming off of it or something wasn't any good but it ended up just being that that stupid um, gasket there when I took it off someone hadn't put gasket compound on it I guess over a period of time maybe the guy's impeller burned out at some point and it got hot and probably burnt the um, burnt the gasket with no gasket compound on it so the gasket compound seems to stop it from burning as well if it gets too hot so and the gasket compound I'm talking about is the Johnson Evinrude here okay so next we are not going to take any more off of this because if I take that off I won't be able to pressure test it so I'm going to flip it around I realize that most of you people are not going to have a fixture you're going to have to probably rig it up the best you can to, uh, to do whatever you can Okay, so there's two styles of um, of um, bearing carriers. There's a bearing. This is one style of bearing carrier that's held in with two bolts here, and. Oops, okay and um, this is another one and there's four four three eight bolts I think it is or seven I'm not sure um, what size it is the uh, I think it's three eights that are on there they're national fine quarter 28 national fine bolts there's four of them and there's an o-ring on them and they'll be down inside if you have this style after you take this out there'll be two clips so it'll be just a little bit different than this but same idea so I'm going to try and uh, take this water passage plate off which seems to be a lot of fun for some people <coughs> Sometimes it takes me longer to get this plate off than it does the rest of the job. <coughs> Occasionally on some of them the studs come up. Don't worry too much about these four because um, bolts that come off of it what you will need to do is um, save the washers because um, the seal kit that comes with it um, comes with the uh, this person has got some kind of a compound on it a silicone or something might be a problem when I go to it might and it might not. It might um, actually allow the, um, the water passage to come off because usually they're corroded. And I normally, um, I've already sprayed this with some seafoam spray. Okay, it's, it's called seafoam. Um, most people use a WD-40 would be common. 
I just have a lot of sea foam around um, so we get it by the case because um, we use it quite a bit so that's that's all there is to that and then what you need to do is put a small screwdriver in okay and take these o-rings off I'm not going to go too far with the o-ring because I may have to put it back in in order to take the bearing carrier out to pressurize the unit because it requires um, a tight fit especially on real bad units or if you break the bearing carrier taking it out if you break it taking it out then you're gonna have to go up to 60 80 pounds to try and take it out um, by by force by the the air pushing it out and at that point you're usually heating it up with a torch and if you don't have a torch you can use something like this 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 plumbing thing and it really depends on how much calcium like sometimes these things come apart and there's no problem and sometimes it's a nightmare okay so we're we're going to take this bearing carrier out uh, I'm kind of lazy and I'm getting old and my arms hurt at the end of the day so as much as possible I use a gun to to take everything apart um, We've even got three guns here that we use to put them together, all set of different torques. If you're in this business and you want a really good gun, this Ingersoll Ram is, we've had it for years. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, that's it for that part. Um, we got the two screws out, and so now we're going to put a uh, bearing carrier puller in. Okay, so this was set up for something else to um, pull another bearing out um, or a bearing carrier out for a Merc, I think, uh, earlier. TC Electronics does sell this unit and it's a uh, it's reasonable in price and wow is it ever handy item and it fits just about it probably I think it doesn't fit the real the smaller ones um, and even the 30 horsepower and stuff I don't think it fits but I think I remember just grinding down the um, the outside lugs here just just so it would fit um, so I could use it with a small one uh, we don't even service small ones to be honest with you it was a I think it was my son's um, out drive he had on his boat or something um, yeah, it's a real small boat and he wrecked it ran over some rocks and uh, wanted to go out, wanted to know if I could fix it and rather than throw it away. And um, we, we managed somehow to save it for him. We don't want to put a lot of money into a little 30 horsepower or a lot of time. Okay, um, I put a couple of screwdrivers in, in there because I, I don't want it to slip off and I don't know how if this is going to come out easy or it's going to be one of those nightmares so I'm going to find out in a hurry. you got to watch how tight you tighten this up I mean and have a look to see if it's coming. If it, if it looks like it's not coming okay um, you you may want to pressure pressurize it with some air on the inside um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put the one o-ring back in over in this area here at the on the side okay right here 
I'm, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt it down so that you have some light you can see what I'm doing here so I'm going to take the, o the old o-ring which sucks by the way um, looks like it's all chewed up I should get a new one but I'm too lazy to go look for one so I'm, and I'd have to clean this all up and I, I really prefer to clean this in the ultrasonics or something else okay so I'm going to put this on here, back that off. It's filled with, I filled it with grease in here so it doesn't stick. I'm not sure. It's tight on the o-ring. I'm just going to drop that down like that. I'm going to tighten up on the screw. See if we can get some pressure. All right. So I, I'm just gonna put say I get 40 pounds here, almost 50. And I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna go easy on this because I keep wrecking those by bouncing them off the floor or whatever okay so I pressurize the inside to 40 50 pounds then I'm gonna use the bearing carrier to pull on this and there you can you can hear the air letting go and which if the air let go that means that it went a quarter of an inch out past the seal area so once you get the bearing carrier to move you're off the hook that means it's going to come out for you usually by getting it to move that little bit quarter of an inch sometimes that's that's another story so besides putting 40 pounds in it often what you need to do is take this torch and heat it all around here heat it on the other side and sometimes you even got to heat it way down at the bottom here where the seal is I'll, I'll show you when I take the bearing carrier out you'll have a better idea even now it's not, it's not all that easy Okay, so okay, I'm gonna take this tool off of here. Okay, so we're just gonna pull this straight up. Okay, so it's not really corroded. There's there's a little bit of stuff there, but and there there is some corrosion right here in this area. But it's it's on a one to ten. This is a good one. Okay, um, seen a lot worse. And up here can be a problem all the way around here. So. Okay, so now we're you're gonna the next thing you're gonna see down in there, okay, is going to be a, a reverse gear. And the reverse gear, um, if you turn it upside down, in most cases, it, it should just fall out. And sometimes there's calcium on the on the shaft here, and it won't come out over it. Okay, but I'm just using two magnetic, um, uh, try and, try and show you here, two, two magnetic pieces, get them at Home Depot, um, and you're going to need one of them to put the pinion 
um, back in when you take it out the pinion um, down inside um, I, we got the reverse gear out now so I'm not sure if you can, if you can see it okay. I think you can okay it's that brown one there at the end so now I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that alone and I'm gonna go back back to this for a second yeah oh. okay because I tap this down I'm probably gonna have a little bit of problem taking it off usually there's no problem taking it off because I'm using this to pressure test it and it's it's under um, 15 pounds so it just pulls straight up that's when we're putting it all back together but that's not the case in this case size of this I think there's seven sixteenths but they're not I'm just so right now I'm gonna take these four bolts off of here if I can find out where I laid the socket Okay, so it is a 7 sixteenths, and the reason it wouldn't uh, go on there is I had these two 7 sixteenths bolts um, nuts up inside of it. There's two different types of bolts. One uses a washer, one does not use a washer. Save the washers, don't drop them. They're not a normal washer size. They're custom made for this job. And you put two screwdrivers to pull this bearing retainer out and you just you just pry it back and forth. There must be a couple of thou play in there because um, it usually comes out not too bad. The only thing you're fighting is a small small o-ring here okay we, we do replace this it's usually all corroded and the seal in here is usually not very good and actually the, the whole thing's not that great but you next you'll see um, these are shims below that will be a thrust bearing below that will be the bearing or thrust sorry thrust washer then the thrust bearing uh, there's a tool that you use that they sell okay that's it there it goes down inside the spline here okay and we need this and I heard some noise which is kind of unusual there, there shouldn't be anything it sounds like something fell down could be a pin or something I'm I'm not sure but it's unusual anyway this goes in here and it turns we're gonna need a torque wrench and the size on this is an inch and an eighth just a half inch socket should be okay and we're gonna leave that there And we're going to okay I'm going to show you why I'm taking this apart if you look down inside that little noise I said I heard it's the reason 
Okay. This is a. Okay. There's the. I'm not sure if I'm going to have trouble taking that shaft off or the nut off the shaft. Or not. Good. So that's your. That's the reason his unit doesn't work anymore. Okay. Um, he probably hit something in the water, or she, or somebody. Um, okay, and it um, split. It split the um, split the pinion in half. It's not. It's not really worn deep all over. It's it's all in one spot here. So that kind of tells me that there was like probably had a stainless steel prop on and he had impact damage like big time. Hard to know for sure, but looking at it that's that's what I, I would guess. Um, this is an original OMC gear set. So you know, it's 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 hard to know. Sometimes um, these are they have flaws in them. You could you could guess forever, but um, but it looks like it was set up because it is the heel to toe here is polished on most of the gears. It's just impact on on one tooth, so. So down inside, we we have to get the nut out that's there. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, I'm just gonna just turn it for you. Okay. So so what there is is, is a device with a slot on it. Again, uh, GLM SternDrive.info carries this. I don't know if they rent it, but you have to talk to the order desk guy, Brian, if he would, if he could send you a used one, and you could send it back when you were finished if you're only doing one. And it slides down over the prop shaft. Okay, so we need to line it up. is uh, a little bit tricky because I don't have the pin in there holding it. Normally I, I would have the pinion holding it. So there is um, when whoever put this together should have used Loctite on the nut and uh, because of that so this is this is holding the nut there at the end of the shaft. Okay, so I'm going to slide a screwdriver down right here behind this. I normally put um, my small crowbar in there that I can't find right now, but it's life in the big city. Okay, and I'm going to see if I can undo that nut. Not sure if the nut's coming off or it's just spinning and I'm missing it, but I think it's coming off. If it is coming off, it came off too easy. It means that possibly there was never any uh, Loctite put on this. Because normally it takes about 70 80 pounds to break it, maybe a hundred sometimes. There we go. Okay. So I'm thinking that there was no Loctite on this nut. Um, 
It's not a good thing. It might could have come loose. Um, okay, so the piece we put in there to hold the nut, it worked. Okay, the special tool. Doing that without this can be, well, it's not quite so hard to take it off, but putting it back, almost impossible without this tool. Okay, so once you get the pinion out of there, and then once you pull the dry shaft out, or the, sorry, not the dry shaft, the shift shaft, and I'm going to unscrew this. It's, I got it turned one turn. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing here, okay, but this would be two, and I'm pulling on it. Okay. Normally, this is coming out at two, which means somebody else has touched it or unscrewed it earlier. Because normally this takes somewhere between seven to nine or six to nine. The, the, you know, depending, it's 7.156 inches from the base of the unit to the very top when it's in neutral. Um, so there's no way it should be two turns, but this one here is, is two turns, so somebody's played with it. Okay, so that comes out like that. The, the dry shaft here is going to come out like this. Um, on, this dry shaft is damaged here where the where the nut, um, where the pinion gear, I should say, possibly the nut backed off, but I don't know. Probably just because the uh, pinion cracked. It's it's a polished area there. It looks like it's been running for a long time before he hit something. So I think the nut was probably probably holding, but I can see that there is no Loctite on it. it never was. Okay, down inside now, what you need to do is you, you need to take out the little bearings. Okay, so there's some small pins down there. And you want to reach down and pull these pins up. Okay, these pins are part of the bearing. I'm, I'm going to show you one. And there should be, and you need to count them, there should be 18 of these pins. And if you don't have metal all over the place, and in this case there's no metal in this, in this thing. It hasn't, um, it's, it, it's unusual, it kind of broke clean. So we don't have little particles going all through the bearing. So for the most part, this is a rare case, you can, you can reuse the bearings if you want to regrease them and use them for the most part. Normally we change them all. So once you get all of those pins out of there, and, I'm, and while I, before I forget, I need to show you that um, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do a video of it going back together, but it's kind of important that that you don't put it back together um, or at least I don't even know if I'm going to be able to show you but if you look very closely okay, on this on this bearing at the top by my up at the top there over here right there it says this side up okay which and then what this means is there's a taper on this case I'm pretty sure that the large end here is the standard size and the opposite end of where it says this side up has a taper on it here it's not much of a taper it's about I think three or five thou somewhere around there but it makes a big difference when you go to guide it in. One way it'll slide in easy, 
and the other way it will all bind and go in crooked and you can end up screwing up the um, inside of the aluminum housing so just have a look for it okay and you can leave the this in when you put it in and push it out at the end it's just a guide when you're putting it back together they're greased pins okay and in this case you could pull that guide out or you could put these pins in yourself with a thick grease make sure they're all in there 18 of them by the way um, and possibly reuse it depending on what your circumstances are or if you're just changing seals or what what you're doing but um, okay so that that would be it for that um, after that this um, unit here is going to just pull up straight up again if the unit has had impact damage okay if if it's had impact damage and it's um, it is um, around the cone then it's going to be pinching this area here and it can sometimes be hard to get it out if that is the case and it won't come out sometimes you have no choice but to um, drill a 5 16th hole at the very end of the of the um, of the case okay right here drill a 5 16th hole tap it 3 8 put your punch in there and push it out if this is all you can see this this is fairly damaged but it didn't affect it um, but if it's banged into it it will affect it so you put a 5 16th after you drill a hole 5 16th you put a 5 16th punch in knock the piece out and then tap it 3 8 get a 3 8 aluminum bolt thread it into your tapped hole with some 680 Loctite on it and just cut and just cut the, um, the, the thread off at the front only needs to go in about a quarter of an inch just enough to plug it so it's not going to leak oil or, or air when you test it okay so that's that part of it okay um, in our case we, we don't really have a um, we're not going to reuse the bearing um, we're, we're going to take it out we have a bearing puller here looks like this okay and um, basically it fits down fits down here like this you put your hand inside the, the unit and you just thread this down and then put an open end wrench or whatever you have on there I'm not sure if this fits it's not the right one So this is a 15 16th if you purchase that um, that tool off of us okay and you're going to need a half inch um, something or other to take this off okay and before you get carried away and start reefing up on this you may want to take out the um, retainer screw that stops it from coming out. So I don't know. I'm just gonna put this down here like this for a second. Okay, there's this the screw here. Okay, and we need to take that out. Um, again, this screw is wonderful sometimes. Occasionally it comes out with a screwdriver, and other times 
you have to use a tool like this. It's, a, it's an impact unit. It's sold by Princess Auto uh, and most auto stores in the United States. Uh, Princess Auto is a, a Canada in Canada. I forget the name of the place down here. But, but it's, this one was purchased um, in the States. But the one from Princess Auto is the same. You put a, it comes with an assortment of bits. You put a Phillips on it, put it in here, and you tap it. But first, I'm going to just see if it'll screw out for me. <coughs> yeah. Okay, it's no problem. It's a quarter 28 hole. If you need to, um, I think it is anyhow. And this one, for instance, is tight on the way out. So I actually have to. So before you would put this screw back in, you would definitely, there we go, you definitely want to um, retap the thread. And I can't, I can't honestly remember if it's uh, quarter 20 or quarter 28. I think it's quarter 20. Yeah, it's quarter 20, I can tell by looking at it. So you might want to retap that quarter 20 before you put the screw in and you definitely need to put a new o-ring on it and some gasket compound. So now that we have that out, you can just see the little retainer that's in there and that's going to pull the bearing up. Okay, so we're going to going to pull this bearing up. Okay, this bearing is a little bit too loose. Normally there's a little bit more tension on it coming up. Um, so if that's the case, and the area where the bearing goes is worn, when you're installing it on the outside of the bearing, you need to clean it, and you might want just to put just a small layer of, um, of Loctite on the outside of the bearing here just just to make up for it and hope that you never have to take it apart again because it holds 1700 pounds but this particular one is a little bit loose in there and that's not good just not snug enough so some people put the pins back in re-grease it and then and then install it with um, We'll see what this one is like. The other one, the, this side up, is almost not legible on it. Yeah, you can. I don't know if you can see that or not in the camera. I can't tell, but uh, when I watch the video, I guess I'll be able to see. At, at any rate, this is the unit. So on your new one, okay, when you're installing it, you're going to slide this over it, clean the outside, add some Loctite if you have to, and you're not going to want the spacer. You're just going to screw this in here you're going to tap it down and there's a, a ledge there I don't know if you can see it I don't think you can see it very well but it bottoms out on the ledge at the bottom so you just tap it lightly and, until it hits the ledge at the bottom and, um, the next thing we would we would do just take 
this off of here. And I'm, I'm not sure how, how long this video took, but it would, be, um, it would be a typical example with me playing with the camera of, of basically how long it takes. And I, the reason I say that is this one relatively came off easy. Normally there would be one part that would go, that uh, it would get screwed up on and would take a little longer but that that pretty much concludes it um, that's about all there is to it if you go take your time it's, it's not a big deal um, if you enjoyed this uh, we'd appreciate it if you could click the like button and if you want the movies as they come out I think they email you if you um, if you join or whatever it is that's written on the website there you can join the forum or whatever, and they'll send you an email when there's a new video coming out. Hopefully we'll do one putting this together uh, step by step so it's not too hard. If you have any questions, just contact sterndrive.info. That's um, just the word www.sterndrive and then dot .info and you'll there's a comment form at the bottom there on the first page and you can if you just have a comment or you want me to give you a call just fill it out and I'll give you a call back um, I can't type where the shit so um, uh, but I know how to dial <laughs> and I'll give you a call back um, we can work it that way if you get stuck doing something or taking it apart whatever problem you're gonna have trust me I've had it before so I hope this video helps you. Thanks, thanks for watching. And do me a favor and press the like button if you liked it. Take care. Have a good day. Just one other thing um, you might want to know is the cost to take this apart is somewhere around two six. Uh, take it apart and put it back together is around I think two sixty to three hundred dollars um, plus parts. So it's a fairly reasonable um, considering we sandblast all the parts inside clean the inside sandblast the inside paint the inside with a zinc chromac and a gloss to go over it um, and you you would have some bearings and things like that um, definitely want to change the prop shaft bearing it's only 11 bucks and you push it out to take the seals out that would be here Okay, so um, that's something to keep in mind. On the other hand, okay, if it costs you $300 in shipping um, to go back and forth, um, you know, now you're up to $600 and you might want to think about doing it yourself. So it really depends on how far away you are from the location that, it's, uh, that the work is going to take place in. Again, thanks for watching.